Greetings friends and Viva Cristore. Today I want to talk a little bit about the parable of the prodigal son. One of the most powerful parables in the Bible. The basic story is a man had two sons. The younger son demanded his inheritance. Sold what when he got it. Sold everything. Went away to a foreign land. Lived it up. Things went wrong, he lost all his money, ended up working in the lowest of the low as a swine herder, serving pigs. Coming to his senses, he decided to go home and become a servant of his father, because he believed, after what he did, he didn't deserve to be called his father's son. On his way back home, while still a long way off, the father saw him, ran to him, clothed him, brought him in and threw a feast in his honour. He was overjoyed at his son's return. The elder brother, who had done all the father asked all along, threw a hissy fit and refused to come to the feast because why should the father forgive the younger son after what he did? The father went out to bring the elder brother in to the feast because he did not want him to be rejected either. The father wanted the elder brother to forgive his younger brother and come in and partake of the feast. That, in a nutshell, is the parable. But there is so much depth to this tale. So much we can get from it. And I'm not going to cover it all here, but I will try to cover the um, the more important points to me. I will briefly cover three main topics here. No one is so far from God that they cannot return to him. The forgiveness of the Father, no matter what, and the often unsavoury nature of those of us who claim to be pious, the unchristian pious. Let's start with no one is too far from God to return. Just look at the younger son. He pretty much told the father, I wish you were dead. I want all that I would have when you died to come to me now. Give it to me. He sold everything, turned his back on the father, went off, had his fun. And then things went wrong. And he ended up serving pigs. Not serving pigs as dinner literally being their servants, feeding them, taking care of them, the lowest of the low. And he decided to return to the father. And the father accepted him. Now to make my point, pigs were not held in very high regard in first century Judea. And the prodigal son was pretty much lower than them. He was serving them. He returned to the father, asked forgiveness. The father forgave him even before he asked that question. The father ran to meet him. Now, there was another who asked for forgiveness. That was the good thief. And when the crucifixion began, he had been mocking Jesus, but while on the cross, he repented, and Jesus not only forgave him, but gave him a place in the kingdom. That should say to us that it is never too late, and you're never so far away that you cannot come back. Now, talking about the forgiveness of the Father, I've pretty much said it already, but the Son was a long way off when the Father ran to meet him. He put his cloak on him, gave him his ring, and made him a son, even though the Son felt unworthy and 
He had not come home. He was still a long way off. But yet the father went to meet him, to ensure he got home, because he wanted to come home. That's what God wants. He doesn't, he doesn't expect us to be perfect because he knows we're not. We're humans. We are fallen in our nature. And we are very, very far from perfect. And all God wants us to do is to try. And I can guarantee you that prodigal son was pretty smelly when the father ran to meet him he'd been minding pigs walking in the hot sun probably hadn't had a bath in a while and yet the father embraced him and that should give each and every one of us hope God will forgive you everything and still bring you into his kingdom. Now, this is a bit of an aside, but it points to the mercy and forgiveness of God. You can be sure that before the prodigal son went into that feast, he had a good wash and put on fresh, clean clothes. This could point to a purgatory that God will let us cleanse ourselves before we get to heaven another mercy another forgiveness or should I say it shows that God forgives and helps us back to fullness and may take a bit of scrubbing but God will get us home that is for another video which I will not go into here but something for you to think about now the next section I want to cover in brief would be the the elder brother or the unchristian pious now he remained with the father did all his duties but when his brother came home, he was not happy. He was upset that the father forgave his younger brother and pretty much expected his younger brother to be cast out for good. Now, we're all guilty of this. We, we can look down on others. And I want to put a short excerpt from uh, Father Brown Mysteries by J.K. Chesterton which goes a long way to explaining what I'm talking about. His religion was made up by men who prayed on high places, on hills and high crags, who learned to look down on the world rather than to look up at heaven. How many of us are guilty of that? setting ourselves on high, saying that we're pious, we're good. We go to Mass, or if you're not Catholic, we go to service, we go to church. And we're so much better than everyone else. That's putting yourself above other people, placing yourself in God's stead, looking down on others, and in doing so, you're turning your back on God. Now, we need to find forgiveness in our own hearts for those who've wronged us. We don't need to feel superior, ignoring the log in our eye and looking at the speck in our brothers. Because that younger brother was far closer to God, or far closer to the father, than the elder brother because he did things out of duty and not out of love. We need to be aware of that in ourselves. Now before I finish up, I'm going to mention another parable that I quite like. And 
There's a lot of elder brothers in this one, the workers in the vineyard. Those who toiled all day were given the same wages as those who arrived in the last hour. The younger brother, if you will, the prodigal sons, arriving late, were still given the full wages of heaven. So, going back to the first point, it's never too late to go back to God. Never. Even at the last hour. And those who toil in the field all day should have a joy that there are more people to share eternity with. I'm going to end it there. There's so much more to this parable, to this and so many other parables that I want to go into in later dates. Let's all pray for each other. Remember that no one is perfect. Remember that there's nothing you have done in your life that will exclude you from God's forgiveness. You're never so far away that you cannot make it back to God. You just have to take that first step. That's it. God is waiting and willing to forgive anything. So take comfort in that. Thank you for listening. I know people said, but if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. Let me know what you think in the comments. I would really appreciate it if you give this channel a sub. And thank you all. God bless you. Viva Cristo Rey.